As one of the larger comic tubers, I get a ton of emails every week from people wanting me to review their books or to try to sponsor videos to get the word out there. Now, a lot of these come from folks that are trying to self-publish their little indie series, so unless it's egregious, I wouldn't make a hate video like this trying to drag them. But today, I want to talk about the time that a big game company decided that they wanted to try their hands at making comics, how they ended up making the worst zombie comics I have ever read, and how they tried to get me to talk them up. So back in 2016, I was approached by a company called Double Take. They were a new division of the game developer and publisher Take-Two Interactive. You know, the people behind franchises like Grand Theft Auto, Civilization, Borderlands, and Bioshock. This new subsidiary was led by former Marvel Vice President Bill Jemis, who was making his return after a nine-year break from the comic industry. Jemis was a controversial figure at Marvel. I mean, it's bad enough that he wrote terrible comics like Marvel, but he also didn't foster a great work environment. Like, for example, Marvel's senior Senior Vice President of Publishing Tom Brevoort recalled in an interview with comic book historians that Jimmis physically threw comics at an editor's head, and when she went to HR about it, he called her into his office and told her, quote, don't be a dick. Now, with that being said, it really did seem like the company was off to a great start, as their initial plan was actually pretty interesting. Make comics set in a combined XCOM, Bioshock, and Civilization universe. However, the game division of Take Two wasn't too keen on letting Double Take play with their properties, so that left them with zero zero IPs to work with, and zero direction for the future. What they settled on was to take George Romero's classic film, Night of the Living Dead, and make comics set in that universe since it was in the public domain. Though, to be honest, I'm not really sure why they wanted to specifically tell stories in that universe as opposed to just making an original zombie comic. I'm thinking it was more about the marketing aspect of getting to say that these comics are a continuation of an already beloved film more than anything else, since the characters from the original movie aren't really utilized in a significant fashion. Also, the funding from Take Two didn't seem to be enough to get the company off the ground, which might explain why they had to turn to Kickstarter on several occasions. Even though the initial audience was excited about these comics, Double Take wasn't able to make them stick around or attract new readers. Probably because these books were god awful. Like, these aren't just the worst zombie comics I've ever read, they are some of the worst comic books I have ever read, and I have read a ton of terrible comics over the years. Since Double Take closed its doors only a year year after they released their first books, there isn't a way to legally obtain them online, which is a massive shame because I typically rely on digital copies in order to get high quality scans for my videos. Even pirating these comics proved to be a massive struggle because nobody even wanted to steal them. Instead of dipping their toes into the water to see what the reception would be like, Double Take decided to belly flop into the pool by releasing 10 series all at once. Also, the books are all set around the same town at the same time, which makes them feel extremely samey with little variety between them. And that's not to mention the fact that they are all just various shades of unreadable. If it weren't for these sexy covers that have nothing to do with the inside of the comics themselves, I doubt anyone would have picked them up in the first place. And look, I'm not going to shame them for that. I mean, plenty of people know that their content isn't that good and have to rely on eye-catching boobs in order to get people interested. While the covers seem promising, the first thing that anyone will notice when opening up one of these comics is the extremely amateurish artwork. Despite each of the series having a different artistic team, they all somehow look more or less the same, and like they belong on a wikiHow rather than being the official releases from a major company. Now, I am by no means an artist, and this is better than anything that I could possibly create, but even though I don't have the words or expertise to articulate exactly how I feel, none of this particularly says zombie to me. These comics really aren't creepy, or scary, or even aesthetically interesting. I mean, if these books were trying to be comedies, then the style would make a lot more sense, but that is clearly not what they're going for. The finished product is just bland, and it's baffling to see this coming from an established company like Take Two trying to break into the comic industry. The lettering is also objectively terrible. It doesn't really come across in the scans that I have since they're from Double Take's now defunct panel by panel reader, but take a look at the extremely flat word balloons and font at work here. I'm not trying to say that they needed to go for the same style as mainstream superhero books, but this looks like the most boring default typeface imaginable, and it only helps to make the entire end product look extremely unprofessional. But what about the stories? Outside of Jemis, Double Take's writing staff didn't have a background in comics, and it really, really shows. The scenes, and especially the dialogue, are extremely awkwardly paced, and nobody feels like a person. Like, look at this. On the night of the zombie outbreak, this dude that owns 
owns a grocery store treats the dead bodies in front of his shop like they're as inconvenient as dog shit. This level of unfeeling during a literal apocalypse is not how anybody would act, and this pulls me right out of the reading experience. These books also like to randomly feature a lot of swearing, sex, and drugs, but none of it is presented in a natural way. It seems tacked on and in your face in an extremely juvenile way. None of it actually adds to the narrative, and it seems like it's just there for the sake of edginess. A prime example of this would be the Home series. The majority of these characters are empty shells that move around from point A to point B. But this little girl swears. You can tell that the writers thought that this was the funniest shit on the planet, because what little passes for a plot will come to a screeching halt over and over and over again just so we can zoom in on the little girl so she can spout off an adult-oriented one-liner. They're not even funny, with these jokes being as clever as a conversation at a middle school lunch table. Are you seriously trying to tell me that this book had four writers and this is the best they could come up with? With ten different books, you would think that there would be something compelling to latch onto somewhere, but there just isn't. The best kinds of zombie media are character-focused, and even when they're not fighting off hordes of the undead, the survivors struggle with living in a world gone to hell, and they clash with others. The survivors that were given here are so bland and forgettable that I couldn't tell you a single name or backstory of any character in any of the 10 series. One of the main reasons for this is that we're not properly introduced to any of the characters before jumping into their lives. Now, from a storytelling perspective, there's nothing wrong with this, but the characters don't explain or really show their motivations for anything, so it gives the appearance that they're just aimlessly moving around without much purpose. Also, I didn't realize it at first, but there aren't any thought bubbles in these comics. That is highly unusual for this medium and if properly utilized, I think that Thought Bubbles would have given better insight to these characters and what they're doing. From a backstory perspective, there's also not much here. There aren't any flashbacks, and the most that we'll get about these characters' backstories is that they'll frequently break into these long monologues. However, any time that one of these happens, it's to spout off a story that is completely unrelated to anything going on at the moment. What's weirder, though, is that these monologues are actually real. You see, Double Take partnered with The Moth, an organization that sets up events for folks to tell stories from their lives. Double Take licensed some of these anecdotes from moth events and put them into their comics so that, quote, there's a little bit of truth to their fiction. In practice, though, it doesn't work. Like, at all. Take, for example, this surgeon, who just randomly starts talking about how he had a hard time with women when he was in high school because he's dyslexic. Does it have anything to do with anything? No. Does it fit with the scene? No. Does this character ever show up again? No. Is the monologue even interesting or entertaining to read? No. See, storytelling is its own art form, and a good storyteller can make even the most mundane of tales enjoyable by how they present it. Inflection, pacing, emphasis, and all of that stuff. These monologues were probably great when they were first told out loud, but they don't translate well into the medium of comic books. And when these characters start going on these completely unrelated tangents, it brings a lot of attention to the fact that there is pretty much zero actual plot happening in these comics. On the bright side, though, the folks that contributed their monologues for the books did get a writing credit, so that's neat. Honestly, I am seriously struggling to find things to talk about in this video, because my biggest problem with Double Take's comics is that there isn't anything of value that's really worth discussing. I mean, if these were simply bad books with nonsensical plots or super out there ideas that fell flat, then that would be a lot of fun to dive into. That kind of terrible is extremely fun to read and make videos about, and the scripts basically write themselves. Double Take's biggest failure is that they are so much worse than just being bad. They're boring and soulless. These comics feel like only the very bare minimum of effort was put into them, and that the company thought that they could skirt by off of sexy cover art and the legacy of Night of the Living Dead. It is extremely obvious that once Double Take couldn't use Take Two's intellectual property, they had no idea of what to do. And they shat out this zombie concept because they would rather put out something than nothing. They read like they're a rushed cash grab, but it even fails at that because the comics were extremely unprofitable profitable, which led to them quickly closing up shop. Maybe if instead of trying to publish 10 series all at once, these ideas could have been streamlined into, I don't know, two or three books. I mean, the narratives of these comics are still really, really bad, but at least cutting between different characters and parts of the town to see a variety of ways that folks are dealing with the zombie crisis would be a good solution to readers getting bored of just one set of underwhelming characters. Or 
here's a crazy idea. Just make one book and try to focus on the individual story being good instead of trying to rush towards building a superhero universe. Oh yeah, you heard me right. Double Take's plan for their books was for some of the zombies to develop superpowers and pave the way towards them competing with the likes of Marvel and DC. That's... That's bold. To my knowledge, Take-Two still owns everything related to Double Take, but I would be legitimately shocked if they were to make a comeback. I know that when the company was first trying to push into the industry, they made a deal with Lionsgate to produce a movie adaptation of their Z-Men comic, but there has been no talk about the project since that initial announcement. However, if Double Take were to return in any way, shape, or form, I think the movie would be it. I can't deny that when Double Take hit me up all those years ago to promote their books, I said yes without looking too much into them. I mean, I was a much smaller channel at the time, and the sponsorship money sounded nice, but when I was finally able to read the books, I obviously wasn't impressed. I made my video into this fluff piece that didn't praise them, but also wasn't as negative as I would have liked, and as soon as I was legally able to remove the video, I did without hesitation. There is plenty more that I would like to talk about in terms of dealing with Double Take staff, but after talking to my network's lawyer, I legally can't because of the contract that I signed for my sponsorship. But regardless, I had such a bad taste in my mouth from the entire experience that I trashed all the comics they sent me, deleted all the digital copies, and honestly, I forgot about them entirely. The only reason that I remember they existed in the first place was because I found these comics while looking through the bargain bin at a secondhand store, and I figured that maybe y'all would be interested in what I had to say. But really, that's all I have on the subject. They are bland and boring books that aren't even worth a hate read. Don't even bother. But if you like this video, then why not consider subscribing or even watching another one? And if you like spooky stuff, well, I have a video about Marvel's vampires. They're actually a lot more fleshed out than you would think, so, you know, maybe go check that out. I think it's interesting at least. But anyway, I hope you learned at least a little something new about crappy comics, I guess, but whatever. Hopefully, I'll see you next time.